on this channel, I've done some battery mods and I'm going to do more. And thankfully, I'm only responsible for burning down my own house. Bruh. An e-bike battery going up into flames is not a new phenomenon. It's simply brought to higher attention because of more electric bikes and thus increasing the likelihood of electric fires. There's more electric bikes on the road than ever before, so there's more that can happen. If you get an electric bike, your chances of an electric fire goes up. Every addition can technically lead to trouble. I can get into trouble every time there's an addition, like the time when my wife got her new personality. So at the end of the day, does the chance of your e-bike catching fire go up? And unfortunately, the answer is yes. Does it increase to any meaningful amount? Probably not. How concerned should you be about e-bike fires? Well, let's rephrase the question a bit. Are you concerned about your phone, your battery bank, or your laptop catching on fire? These are all items that would have to go through the screening process at the airport and carried on rather than checked in because they can be fire hazards. And it's just better policy to avoid the plane catching on fire. And it's better that the airlines let the passengers catch on fire instead. Wow. I want to talk about how batteries catch on fire and knowing how may give you the idea of prevention. The first way they catch on fire is internal short circuit. This can happen due to heat buildup, poor components, or poor welds. It's quite common that e-bike batteries come from remanufactured car cells. The remanufacturing process is complicated and it introduces human error into the equation so you can get faulty batteries. A second way this can happen is overcharging. Now this shouldn't be simple to do. You have to have a runaway charger that keeps pumping and pumping the voltage higher and higher until the battery can't handle and then it blows, like eating too much Taco Bell. Ooh. The Cal MM batteries offer overcharge and discharge protection. And yet in the rare case, if your charger and BMS fails, well then you've got a disaster in the works. Maybe. How can you avoid these problems? Well, one way is through battery chemistry. And I'm old school. I came from a time where there was LiPo batteries, lithium iron phosphate. Those are safe. They do not catch on fire when they are overcharged or short circuited. So why aren't these in more bikes? Well, the short answer is that they don't discharge a lot of power very fast and bikers, they like fast bikes. So it's not the greatest alternative. These typically came with conversion kits way back when. There's also the issue of weight and size. These are typically bigger than normal and maybe it's ahead of its time and not quite ready to be a Walmart superstar model. Your e-bike probably uses one of these inside a big enclosure with many series and parallels to make a big battery. The Cal MM battery claims to be very specifically flame retardant electrolyte and explosion proof polymer cells. So in the worst case, you can get an acid run and get a burning sensation like a yeast infection. On a related note, the bigger the battery, the more welds it has, the more padding it needs, the danger factor changes a lot. For instance, a Suron battery with 60 volts and 80 amps can pump a lot more wattage than a Jetson Bolt Pro battery, which I'm guessing can do 15 amp peaks at 36 volts. We're talking about 540 peak watts versus 4,800 peak watts. These are huge discrepancies. A fire on a Bolt will be vastly different than the one on a Suron. Another solution are solid state batteries. They're currently being developed for electric cars, offer lower fire danger, better density, longer life, and much faster to charge. The issue is that the tech is rather new and not fully developed. It doesn't exist yet for e-bikes. Aside from battery chemistry, aside from battery build quality, those are things that might be out of your reach. There is something you can do. Avoid overcharging. Once your battery has reached capacity, simply unplug it 
If you're not around to do it, get a very simple timer. Batteries typically charge within a few hours. For instance, the Bolt battery has a 6 amp capacity. You can determine how long it charges with simple division. A 2 amp hour charger, well, that's going to take 3 hours to charge it. Set up a 3 hour timer and just have it turn off when it's done charging. Alternatively, fireproof bags. Well, these things probably won't work that well. I don't think they're sturdy enough. And I just wouldn't trust a large capacity bike with one of these bags. They're just too thin. It can claim anti-flammable all at once, but if it's not thick and heavy duty, an ammo box or bat safe will do the job. And at minimum, it'll buy you some time. These are much more sturdy, strong, and hefty like my mother-in-law. And this last method is for the simple type of person that's maybe not so spinny. I'm not saying that you're cheap or anything because you don't want to buy your safety and secure your home and family. But this method requires no money. After three hours, you can just walk over to the bike and simply unplug it. There's no reason to leave these things charging overnight. And unfortunately, these little bikes, they're just not smart devices. They don't know when to stop on their own, unlike our smartphones. And those are the ways that you can prevent your bike from catching fire. Let me know in the comments below, has your bike or has any e-device of yours caught on fire before? Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, share. Watch the next video. Have a good one and see you in the next one. Take care.